All right, thank you guys. Happy Monday to you. Now, if you want to save yourself some time, all of today's picks for this video can be located at the end of the video, my quick pick recap. So if you're pressed for time or if you just want to, uh, you know, kind of figure out what the pick is right away, just go ahead and fast forward right now to my uh, quick pick recap, which is located at the end of this video. No harm, no foul. I don't hate you for it. But anyway, guys, uh, for those who want to stick around, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Falcons taking on the Panthers. And that's going to be an 8.20 p.m. Eastern start time on Thursday Night Football. Now, the Panthers are the three-point favorite at home. Totals 50 points. We are 3-1 and one in our last four daily best plays on Patreon.com slash Brock Page. And access to those premium sports picks costs just $1.99. In addition to that, we're also hitting at 67% in our last nine extra daily picks on that very same website. And access to those plays costs just $2.99. Now we have well over 790 members signed up and active on that page. And if you want to join those folks and get in on the action, I'd be more than happy to have you. Link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. And moving on, the Falcons are plus $1.20 on the money line this Thursday. So if you like them in an upset win, plus $1.20 to get the job done. And if you like the Falcons catching the three, they're minus a buck 18 to get the job done against the number. Now, the Falcons are coming off yet another loss yesterday. They gave up 10 fourth quarter points to lose 23 to 22 uh, to the Lions. That's going to drop Atlanta to just one and six on the season. Their, uh, their season's pretty much shot already. And uh, even more significant for betters, the Falcons have failed to cover the point spread in four out of their last five ball games. So really, uh, Atlanta kind of worthless for their fans and their backers. Uh, but anyway, this Falcons defense ranks in the top three in the league in most passing yards allowed per contest. They're also in the top three in most yards allowed per play. And they're taking on a Carolina squad who's successfully covered the number in four out of their last five. And those were marquee covers against the likes of New Orleans, Arizona, the Chargers, and against these very Atlanta Falcons. They actually beat the uh, the Falcons 23-16 to back on October 11th in Atlanta. Now, uh, Carolina, this offense ranks in the top 10 in the league in yards per play. They're also in the top 10 in home rushing. They're gaining nearly 140 yards a game on the ground in Charlotte at home. Now, Mike Davis is averaging four yards a carry, and he scored a couple of touchdowns on the ground this season as well. Certainly, uh, you know, not comparable to the regular guy, but still some pretty good production out of Mike Davis. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater is also averaging 5.2 yards a carry when he uh, scrambles and takes it himself. And he's thrown for nearly 2,000 yards on the season already. Pretty good production out of Bridgewater. His favorite target has been Robbie Anderson, who has 46 catches for 640 yards and a touchdown. Whiteout DJ Moore also has 567 receiving yards and three scores himself. Uh, this receiving combo of both of those guys, they're averaging over 170 combined receiving yards a game together. Uh, the Carolina offense, they rank in the top three in first quarter scoring at home. They're also in the top 10 in home fourth quarter scoring as well. And, you know, despite struggling in a few spots this season, this Carolina defense is also holding their opponents to just six fourth quarter points as well. So certainly putting down the clamps late in games. Now they forced 10 turnovers through seven games, while cornerback Dante Jackson has a pair of interceptions and 11 tackles. Brian Burns has three sacks and a trio of forced fumbles on the season himself. And linebacker Shaq Thompson has 60 total tackles thus far in the season. Now total-wise, when it comes to the uh, number in this one, the Panthers did see two out of their last three home games get over the posted total. Meanwhile, two out of Atlanta's last three road games got over the line themselves. So with all that said and done, I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the Panthers minus three and the over 50 points in that contest. And before we go ahead and move on and uh, dive back into some more free content right here on YouTube, just want to uh, take another quick time out and uh, welcome you once again to the video. Got some lines and personal leans out for NFL Week 8. Can't believe it's Week 8 already. Uh, we're almost at the the halfway point uh, since there are 17 weeks in the official 
uh, NFL season. But anyway, almost at the halfway point there. Now, before we dive into some more free content right here on YouTube, just got to quickly remind you once again that we are currently 3-1 in our last four daily best plays on Patreon.com slash Brock Page. And access to that content costs just $1.99 we're also hitting at 67% in our last nine extra daily picks on that site as well. We currently have over 790 members signed up and active on that site. And if you want to join them and get in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. I'd love to have you on the website. And once again, that is patreon.com slash Brock Page. And moving on, we are going to take a look at, wow, that's all the way down there. We're going to take a look at the Steelers. Taking on the Ravens, 1 p.m. Eastern start time this Sunday. Now, the Ravens are the five-point favorite. Totals 48. The Steelers are plus $1.75 on the money line. Now, the Steelers remain unbeaten after their 27-24 victory over Tennessee. They've successfully covered the number in their last four straight, and they rank in the top 10 in the league in scoring on average per game, certainly getting the job done uh, with regard to offensive production. Now, James Connors rushed for over 450 yards and four touchdowns on the ground. And wide out Chase Claypool has 333 receiving yards and four touchdowns. He's averaging 19 yards a reception, really uh, getting a lot of yardage in, uh, in big chunks there. Now, the Steelers are 2-0 straight up in their pair of road games this year, 2-0 against the number in those contests. But the real story with this Pittsburgh ball club, believe it or not, has been their stifling defense. Very, very sound defensively. They're in the top three and fewest rush yards allowed per contest. They're giving up just 68 yards a game on the ground. And they also rank in the top three and fewest yards given up per play. Now, T.J. Watt has five and a half sacks and 13 tackles for loss on the season. Steven Nelson also has two interceptions on the season, 21 total tackles. And linebacker Vince Williams currently leads the team in tackles with 32. This Pittsburgh defense... They've sacked the quarterback 26 times already, and they have uh, nine takeaways. So really uh, getting to the quarterback uh, a lot, causing all kinds of havoc. Now they're taking on a Raven squad who failed to cover the number in three out of their last four. With two of those failures to cover, coming against the likes of Philadelphia and Washington, two bottom feeder teams, very bad football teams, and uh, Baltimore could not get the job done for their backers. Now, Baltimore is in the bottom three in the league in passing yards, bottom 10 in offensive time of possession at home. Lamar Jackson's thrown for just 189 yards a game, and he's been sacked 15 times. Uh, kind of hard to believe as uh, elusive as he is, but he's been sacked 15 times. Now, Ingram, Wolf, Levine, Moore, Averett, and Phillips are all questionable for the Ravens. Mike Hilton and Derek Watt are listed as questionable for the Steelers. And when it comes to the total in this one, all three of Baltimore's home games this season stayed under the posted total. Meanwhile, the Steelers on the other side have gone 2-0 to the under when they travel themselves. Give me the Steelers plus five, getting the job done against the number and the under 48 points in that ball game. All right, next matchup we're going to take a look at. Uh, it is going to be... We're going to find it. There it is. Patriots, Bills, 1 p.m. Eastern start time. The Bills are the four-point favorite. Totals 44. The Patriots are plus $1.60 on the money line. Now, uh, New England's currently on a three-game losing streak, really, really struggling as of late. And they're just 1-4 against the spread in their last five. Typically, this uh, Patriots team has been a good covering team, but... Uh, not in 2020. The Patriots ranked in the bottom five in scoring, bottom five in passing. They're averaging just 19 points a game, and they're throwing for less than 198 yards per contest as well. Cam Newton's also been sacked 10 times in five starts, and he's already thrown seven interceptions. This New England defense has also struggled to keep these guys in ball games as well. They're in the top 10 in most rush yards allowed per contest, top 10 in most yards allowed per play. Tooney and Harry are questionable for Sunday. Two very important players for New England. Uh, Duggar and Heron are also questionable uh, for the Patriots as well. Now, New England is 0-2 straight up on the road. 0-2 against the spread in those contests. Now, the Patriots are taking on a Bills team who's coming fresh off an 18-10 victory over the Jets. Uh, a little bit dicey, but a very nice second-half effort out of this Bills team. 
Buffalo improved to 5-2 and two on the year with that win over the Jets, and they rank in the top 10 in passing yards per game. Josh Allen's thrown for over 2,000 yards on the season already, 16 touchdown passes and three rushing TDs for Allen. That's 19 total touchdowns that Josh Allen is responsible for. His favorite target's been Stephon Diggs, who has 48 receptions for 603 yards and three scores. Buffalo's in the top 10 in the league in first quarter scoring, top 10 in fourth quarter scoring as well. Now, Brown, Ford, and Knox, they are all questionable for the Bills. And when it comes to the total in this one, Buffalo's 5-2 and two to the over for the season, 2-1 to the over at home. Give me the Buffalo Bills minus 4 in the over, 44 in that ball game. All right, next matchup I have for you. It is going to be uh, Tennessee squaring off against the Bengals. And that's going to be a 1 p.m. Eastern kickoff at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. Now, the Titans are the six-point favorite on the road. Totals 54 and a hook. The Cincinnati defense, once again, uh, failed them. They continue to fail uh, the Bengals here. Uh, They failed them once again yesterday. The Bengals came up. uh, They gave up Let's try that again. The Bengals gave up 20 fourth quarter points to lose to the Browns, 37-34. We got that one out. That's good. Uh, Since he's on a three-game losing streak, and they lost two out of their last three at home, the Cincy D ranks in the top five in the league in most uh, yards allowed per play. They're also in the top five in rush yards allowed per contest. Now, they're giving up 134 yards a game on the ground. And as good as rookie Joe Burrow's been, probably, but I, I'm going to go out and say it, he's my favorite player in the league right now. Uh, just absolutely love the guy. Hard to root against him. Uh, but anyway, this poor guy's been sacked 28 times already as uh, Cincinnati ranks in the bottom 10 in offensive yards per play. Now, Hopkins, Jackson, Ross, and Mixon are all questionable for Cincy, so uh, just keep an eye on those guys. But uh, they're taking on a Titans team who successfully covered the point spread in two out of their last three. Uh, They're 2-0 straight up on the road. Tennessee is also in the top five in scoring, top five in rushing. They're averaging over 31 points a game, and they're rushing for nearly a buck 50 on the ground. And I'll tell you what, if you're a defense, I can't imagine trying to tackle or game plan for Derrick Henry. Even if you call the right play, uh, he just runs you over. Uh, Derrick Henry's rushed for 663 yards on the season, seven touchdowns, 4.6 yards a carry. The Titans also rank in the top 10 in the league in road passing. Ryan Tannehill's completing nearly 70% of his passes for 1,590 yards and 15 touchdowns. He's actually been sacked only seven times, and he's only thrown a pair of interceptions. Very a productive year for Tannehill. Now, his favorite target's been A.J. Brown, who has 23 catches for 332 yards and four scores. And tight end Jonu Smith also has 20 grabs for 243 and five touchdowns himself. Certainly a red zone and short yardage uh, threat there. Now, total-wise, Tennessee ranks in the bottom three in the league in first quarter scoring on the road. They're in the bottom five in second quarter scoring on the road as well. Meanwhile, uh, the Bengals on the other side, they're allowing just three first uh First quarter points a game at home. They're also in the bottom 10 in fourth quarter scoring as well. Not seeing a whole lot of points in this one. Give me the Tennessee Titans minus six in the under. 54 and a half in that game. All right, next matchup. It is going to be the Raiders taking on the Browns. 1 p.m. Eastern start time. Browns are the three-point favorite at home. Totals 54 and a hook. The Raiders are plus a buck and a quarter for an upset win on the road. Now, the Raiders have won two out of their last three road games. They're playing pretty good ball when they travel this year. They rank in the top 10 in the league in uh, passing yards per contest. Derek Carr is completing 72% of his passes for over 1,700 yards and 13 touchdowns. He's having a pretty good season here. He's averaging nearly 290 pass yards per game, and he's thrown just a pair of interceptions. Now, tight end Darren Waller's caught 40 balls for 345 yards and three touchdowns. And much to my surprise, the guy who dropped more balls in Philly than uh, any receiver in any city ever, uh, Nelson Aguilar. He's averaging 20 yards of reception, and he scored four times. Las Vegas ranks in the top three in yards per play on the road. They're scoring over 31 points a game when they travel. Now, Brown, Abram, Nixon, and Edwards are all questionable for the Raiders. Keep an eye on them. But uh, Las Vegas, they're taking on a Cleveland squad who... Failed to cover the number in their last two straight. 
They're in the bottom 10 in the league in passing. Uh, Baker Mayfield's completing just 63% of his passes for 198 yards a game. Not very good numbers there. Uh, He's been sacked 11 times, and he's thrown seven interceptions already as well. They're going to have to go to work without two of their offensive stars now. Kind of a war of attrition here as these Browns keep uh, getting banged up here. Odell Beckham out for the season. Nick Chubb still on the IR. Tight end Austin uh, Hoopers uh, also listed as questionable for this Sunday. So these guys are really, really banged up right now. Now the Browns have also been very bad on, on defense as well. Over 33 points a game they've given up in their last four straight. The Browns rank in the top five in most uh, points allowed per contest. Top three in uh, most passing yards allowed per game as well. Now, total-wise, when it comes to uh, the, the number in this one, five out of Cleveland's last six ball games got over the posted total. Meanwhile, the Raiders' last six straight all got over the number themselves. They're 3-0 to the over when they travel. So with all that in mind, give me the underdog Raiders plus three and the over 54.5 in that contest. Next matchup, Colts-Lions, 1 p.m. East. The Colts are the three-point favorite on the road. Total's 50 and a hook. Now, the Lions are plus a buck 35 for an upset win at home. A couple of surprising victories for the Lions this year. Uh, having said that, though, the Lions are in the bottom three in rushing, bottom three in offensive time of possession. Uh, they're rushing for under 94 yards a, a game, and they just can't keep their defense off the field. They were winless 0-2 straight up at Ford Field this season. They did fail to cover uh, the point spread in both of those contests. So, uh, you know, no real surprise there. They're playing bad at home. They're not getting the job done against the number at Ford Field either. Now, as a matter of fact, the Lions are giving up 31 points a game at home, and they're allowing over 155 yards on the ground in that category. Now, Trufant and Killebrew are both questionable for the Lions. They're taking on an, an indie squad here who's coming fresh off a of bye week, so they're going to be recharged really fresh. They've also won four out of their last five ball games and covered the number three times during that stretch. Now, Indy ranks in the top 10 in passing, and they average over 26 points a game. Now, Phillip Rivers is completing 70% of his passes, very efficient. Uh, sacked only five times, and he's just two yards shy of 1,600 yards passing. Meanwhile, defensively, on the uh, other side of the ball here, this Colt squad is allowing just 19 points per contest in less than 200 yards passing a game. Very, very good defensively. They rank in the top three in fewest rush yards allowed per contest, top three in fewest yards allowed per play. Now, Justin Houston's got three and a half sacks and four and a half tackles for loss on the season. Anthony Walker is currently leading the team in tackles with 39 of them. And defensive backs TJ Carey, Xavier Rhodes, and um, Julian Blackman, they all have a pair of interceptions as well. This uh, ball hawking secondary. What's going on here? We got some music playing in the background. Let's mute that. Anyway, sorry about that. We had some, what was that, Juicy J, an NLE Choppa. Nice. Uh, anyway, what were we doing here, guys? Uh, I was distracted. Uh, we were talking about, oh, um, Julian Blackman, uh, Carey, and Rhodes. They all have a pair of interceptions. Uh, sorry, I got thrown off there a little bit. We got crazy stuff going in the background now. Uh, but anyway, uh, Green, Leonard, and Mo Ali Cox are all questionable for Sunday. And when it comes to the total in this one, Indy's last two straight ball games both got over the posted total. Two out of their last three road games also got over the line. Meanwhile, the Lions on the other side, they're officially 2-0 to the over at Ford Field this season. So with all that said and done, give me the Colts minus three and the over 50 and a half in that ball game. And with that, we're going to dive into our next and final matchup for the show. It is going to be, I think I'm looking for the Vikings here. Yeah, Vikings taking on the Packers, 1 p.m. Eastern start time. The Packers are the six and a half point favorite at home. Totals 55 points. The Vikes are plus 230 for an uh, outright upset win. Minnesota's on a two-game losing streak, just one and five straight up for the entire season. Now they're uh, giving up 32 points a game defensively, and they rank in the top five in most pass yards allowed. They're giving up nearly 290 passing yards a game. They're also in the top 10 in most yards allowed per play. Daniel, let's try that again. Daniel, Daniel Hunter, he's out for the season. 
Ngakwe, Cook, Hughes, Hill, Boyd, Samia, and Osborne. They're all questionable for this Sunday as well. They're taking on a Green Bay squad who's in the top three in the league in scoring, top five in yards per play. Aaron Rodgers has thrown for over 100, uh, yeah, well over 100 yards. As a matter of fact, Aaron Rodgers has thrown for over 1,650 yards, 17 touchdowns compared to just two interceptions. Devontae Adams has 449 yards and four touchdowns. And keep in mind, he missed two games. Big tight end Robert Tanyan has caught 18 balls for 230 and five scores. The Green Bay rushing attack is also gaining over 132 yards a game on the ground. Running back Aaron Jones is averaging 5.2 yards a carry, and he's rushed it for nearly 400 yards on the season. He's also punched it into the end zone five times on the ground as well. And now do keep an eye on Jones uh, as he's been banged up. Who do we got back there? That's a, oh, that's young Dolph. Uh, anyway, the Packers are 2-0 straight up at Lambeau, 5-1 straight up for the entire season. You'll also want to keep an eye on Bakhtiari, Irvin King, Lancaster, and Savage. They're all listed as questionable for the pack. Now, total-wise, when it comes to uh, the number in this one, Green Bay's last three straight contests all stayed under the posted number. Meanwhile, the Vikings saw two out of their last three road games stay under the line themselves. Give me the Packers minus six and a half and the under 55 in that ball game. And with that, guys, we're going to dive into our quick pick recap brought to you by patreon.com slash Brock Page. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the Panthers minus three over 50. Steelers plus five under 48. Buffalo minus four over 44. Titans minus six under 54 and a hook. I'm also going to lean toward the underdog Raiders plus three over 54 and a half. Colts minus three over 50 and a hook. And last but certainly not least, uh, I'm going to lean toward the Packers minus six and a half in the under 55 in that game. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you guys decide to get a package here today, just keep in mind, we'll bill you the day you sign up and then the uh, first of every month following that. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, happy Monday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash Brock Page.